<laughs> Thank you for having me, Fred. As a social architect, would you say what you do is an act or an art? I think it's a little of both. Um, it's an art because um, in a line of business, we, we create beauty out of nothing. We build solutions from basically nothing and they are fantastic solutions. And it's, it, it can be an act because our work is also process and procedural. So step begats step, um, process, um, level begats level. So a little of both I'd say. Do you think Nigerians can develop world-class solutions? Fred, that's, that's an interesting question you ask. And I say it's interesting because I think um, the development community doesn't get the sort of attention I think they should have. Um, we have a lot of brilliant um, people in Nigeria. For As an example, my company, Ideas Africa, um, our team is completely local. And I dare say that we have created world-class applications you know, that have been acclaimed by those high up there. So yes, we, we, can, have, um, we can develop beautiful solutions in Nigeria, youth can, world class. Um, as a second example, I'll draw that from the kids you know, that were recognized recently in Silicon Valley. Those were secondary school children, children in secondary school. But well, they came up with a practical and beautiful solution. They came first in the competition. So I think we don't celebrate our own enough on this side of the world. We can definitely do a lot better than that. You know, that's on one hand. How can we get government and private organizations to understand that Nigerian developers can actually develop good solutions and so they can stop uh, exporting our solutions abroad? That's another thing that really pains me. Um, so for starters, I, I'd say um, a national strategy will really help. A national IT strategy in terms of direction, in terms of goal, in terms of um, training our young developers, in terms of placements. So I don't expect the government to, to outsource their biggest projects you know, to, to, to the Nigerian youths um, without being tried or tested. But then there are different levels, you understand, of development where our youths can completely fit and grow across the ranks. And that being said, we do have a lot of brilliant Nigerian companies. They are doing spectacularly well. They are doing very well in the industry and a lot of the jobs, you know, that we give out to foreign nationals or we outsource, it could easily be done here cheaper and we keep the money in the system. What are some of the ways you believe we can take advantage of the opportunities today in the world of technology? It's a national strategy. There's no one person or no individual or no company that can do this on our own. As a country, we must realize that potentials exist in this space, we should, we, we should also realize that, I mean, our biggest assets, our, our human capital, our youths, they are our biggest assets. We have, I mean, over 100 million youths. Imagine if each one of these youths was empowered with a technological skill and we'll send them abroad to the world to develop world-class solutions. The story will be different, the narrative will be different, we'll be speaking something completely different now if we were to harness our potential. So again, I'd say it, it comes down to a national strategy. Uh, our leaders should be able to identify and know that potentials do exist in these areas. So share with us, um, what are the solutions you have created today? One of our most successful applications um, was one we did for Channel Television. Um, it's, it, till date, it's got over 2.5 million downloads in the store. And um, for an application that is news-based, I think that's, that's, that's truly a fit. Because um, you find out that the majority look for softer content. But for a news-based application, over 2 million installs, I mean, it's great. 2 million plus download is quite a lot. How do you ensure that such an app is free from bugs? How does it get developed? What happens behind the scene? In the development cycle, um, feedback is an important component and it's a component a lot of people miss out on. So it's not enough to build an application and put it in the store, but I mean, to be able to get feedback from the users, 
it's, I think it's the most important step in the development cycle because the customer or your audience is truly the king. When they give you honest and candid feedback through your store reviews or through the application um, feedback mechanism, we take, we take that feedback and we pass it to our development team who are able to turn that around you know, and make the overall ap application experience a lot better for the user. Do you offer some sort of guarantees to your prospective customers if they come to you? Oh, yes, so our watchword is excellence and um, it's the guiding principle for everything we do. So um, for the clients that we've worked with across the different strata of society, I mean, the feedback has been amazing. And um, it's all hinge or premise on our being able to handhold the customer from the beginning of the step to understand his requirements, you know, and help him translate that to his business goals, you know making sure that we don't compromise on quality along the way. Let's talk about artificial intelligence. How are you infusing it into some of the things that you do? Um, AI has many use cases. Um, it's the future. I mean, we're living the future now with AI. Um, so, for example, I'll speak about um, our recommendation engine, which we're building into one of our solutions, TV Now. Um, this looks at the user behavior and consumption patterns and is able to make recommendations, viewing recommendations to the end users based on these patterns, you know. And I mean, a lot of these algorithms that we make use of, you know, they have accuracies up to over 90%. So the chances that the movie that is recommended to you to watch is something you like, it's, it's 90 plus percent, which is brilliant. So if you think about it critically, Fred, these are, these are things that didn't exist five years ago. I mean, they were not widespread five years ago, but these are technologies that have come, you know, and we're infusing it into our work, workflows and processes. A lot of people are skeptical when it comes to AI for various reasons. Um, but let's look at the positive side. Um, on the national level, what kind of problem do you think we can solve using AI? We do have a number of complex problems in Nigeria. Um, one of them would be the identity management in the country. We have um, a lot of government agencies and parastatals that pick information from Nigerians. You know, we, we, have, we have image databases of Nigerians that are going of information, yet identifying people is still a problem. I mean, when, when there's, there's an offense or where there's an issue, identifying Tracking individuals is a problem. This is something AI can solve very, very easily. It's just a question of harnessing the potentials of the databases that are available and matching it with AI, you know, and you have a functional identity management solution. But I mean, the cases are not limited to that. They are I mean, pretty much limitless. Finally, Tony, uh, looking at the industry today, what would your advice be for young people who want to get into the industry? I think um, for the young developers, the younger ones, I'd say they should stay focused. Um, development work, it's not, always, um, it's not always a smooth road. There are hiccups here and there, but for the focus and um, determined, the sky, can't, the sky isn't your limit, you would excel. So I just ask them to be focused, be determined and expose themselves. With the internet, there's a plethora of things one can learn. And really right now, there's no reason not to know with the availability of the internet. So get exposed, be determined, pursue your goals and dreams tenaciously, and you'll be there right there at the top. So you think we've been on the show today? Thank you very much, Fred. That was Tony Ogulande head ICT at IDS Africa, a firm that has developed some pretty successful applications and solutions across multiple platforms and various industries. That's our show today. But the conversation continues online. Please post on social media. And don't forget, you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukameka Agbata.